Welcome back to Harbour Unbox for part two of our Ryzen 3, the ultimate gaming benchmark guide overclocking edition. Uh, previously, we looked at how the Ryzen 3 1300X and 1200 compared to the Ryzen 5 1400, Core i5 7400, and Pentium G4560, and all the processors in that video were tested at their stock out-of-the-box clock speeds. As promised in that video, I would overclock the unlocked Ryzen 3 and 5 CPUs and then retest them against the locked Pentium and Core i5 CPUs. So that's exactly what we're here to do. Please note though, I have dropped the Ryzen 3 1300 since it hits the same 4 GHz frequency as the cheaper R3 1200. And at that speed, they both deliver the same performance. So there was no point testing them both, as you would see, just the same figures on the graph. So got rid of the 1300X. Hope that clears that up. In my opinion, if you plan to overclock, then the R3 1300X is a bit of a bad buy. Instead, I recommend save yourself the $20 and get the R3 1200. So we have the R3 1200, both stock and at 4 GHz, along with the R5 1400, which has also been tested at 4 GHz, and they will once again be compared to the Core i5 7400 and Pentium G4560. Also, once again, I have tested using the GeForce GTX 1060, 1070, and 1080 at the 1080p resolution. Yes, I know you will want a version with the Radeon RX 580, Vega 56, and Vega 64. And yes, I'll get one done soon. Although I'm only testing a single resolution, the fact that we do have three different performing GPUs will give you an idea of how things should scale. It'll also give those sensible folks pairing a budget CPU with a budget GPU a real idea of what to expect. Meanwhile, by including the GTX 1080, you can see what kind of performance a faster processor might enable, should you have the CPU power to take advantage of it. Right, let's check out the results, and then we'll discuss a few things at the end of the video to the benchmarks. First up, we have Battlefield 1, and here we see when using the GTX 1060, we do run into a severe GPU bottleneck that limits the average frame rate to 80 FPS and the minimum to around 71 FPS. These figures were achieved by all five CPU configurations. Increasing the rendering power with the GeForce GTX 1070, we see that through overclocking, the Ryzen 3 1200 is now just 4% faster for the average frame rate, but 7% faster for the minimum. The overclocked R3 1200 was also 15% faster than the G4560 when comparing the minimum result, and it was also 2% slower than the Core i5-7400. Not bad, given the cost saving here. Now, in the unlikely scenario that you do run with a GTX 1080, we see that the overclocked R3 1200 boosts the minimum result again by 7%, though this time the average was increased by 15%. Even with the mighty GDX 1080, the R3 1200 is able to match the i5-7400 once overclocked. Meanwhile, the R5-1400 streaks ahead and looks quite impressive here. Alright, so moving right along, next up we have F1 2016, and quite surprisingly we find more extreme margins when compared to those previously seen in Battlefield 1. Having said that, the GTX 1060 results are much the same, and it's not until we upgrade to the GTX 1070 that we start to see a separation between the quad cores and the dual core. Quite shockingly, the overclocked Ryzen 3 1200 at 4GHz is 35% faster than the Pentium G4560 when comparing the minimum frame rate. And this rather large margin is thanks to an increased 9% uh, bump in performance from the overclock. This also meant that the overclocked R3 1200 was able to deliver similar performance to the more expensive Core i5-7400. Then when paired with the GTX 1080, the overclocked R3 1200 became 44% faster than the Pentium G4560 and even edged ahead of the Core i5-7400 by a 7% margin for the average frame rate. Perhaps even more impressive is the fact that the R3 1200 matched the R5-1400, so a very solid result for AMD's new budget champ. Shuffling right along, we find the Far Cry Primal results, and as a mostly GPU-bound game, it's not too surprising to find that all CPU configurations deliver the same numbers with the GeForce GTX 1060 once again. Moving up the food chain, we find the GTX 1070, and here things start to get a little bit interesting. Overclocked, the Ryzen 3 1200 is now able to deliver 6% more frames on average, and 11% when looking at the 1% lows. More importantly, the overclocked R3 1200 once again matches the Core i5 7400. Once we step up to the GeForce GTX 1080, the Ryzen 3 1200 pulls comfortably ahead of the Core i5-7400 once overclocked, and is also 18% faster than the G4560. Not a bad result for AMD in a mostly GPU-bound title. 
Now for some DirectX 12 action, we have Total War Warhammer, and for the first time we see some variance between the results when using the GTX 1060. The main thing to note here is that it is the Pentium G4560 that falls away in this very CPU intensive title. Overclocked, the R3 1200 makes up the small amount of ground it trailed from the R5 1400 and i5 7400. Once we upgrade to the GTX 1070, we find that even overclocked, the R3 1200 does trail the Core i5-7400, albeit the margin is quite small. Overclocking does boost the average frame rate of the Ryzen 3 CPU by an impressive 11%. Finally, with the GTX 1080 installed, the overclocked R3 1200 actually catches up, and we've seen this quite a few times already in the other titles tested. It's now able to deliver Core i5-7400 light performance while crushing the cheaper Pentium G4560. Overwatch is another CPU-intensive title, and here all five configurations were able to max out the GTX 1060 with an average of around 147 FPS. For this title, I do use our 12-player bot match, so these are some very impressive numbers, particularly from the lowly G4560. Now with the GTX 1070 installed, the overclocked R3 1200 goes from 147 FPS to 187 FPS, and that's a decent 27% boost. That said, it pales in comparison to the R5 1400, which saw a very healthy 37% boost. Still, the R3 1200 did match the more expensive Core i5 7400, so an impressive result here for the plucky little Ryzen 3 CPU. Now, with the GTX 1080 installed, we find that once again the overclocked R3 1200 is able to outperform the Core i5-7400. It's well worth noting that the Ryzen 3 CPU was able to maintain over 180 FPS at all times in this very CPU-intensive game. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt leans heavily on both the CPU and GPU, though using the ultra-quality settings like I have, it's generally more GPU-dependent even at 1080p. As you can see with the GTX 1060 installed, there isn't really much to talk about, all five configurations maxed out this mid-range GPU. The same is also true for the GTX 1070 though, here we do see the Pentium G4560 falling behind a bit for the 1% low results. Even with the GTX 1080 installed, we don't have too much to talk about. That said here, the overclocked R3 1200 is able to hunt down the Core i5-7400 and once again match its performance. Next up we have Rainbow Six Siege, and here the Ryzen 3 CPU did offer slightly better numbers with the GTX 1060 when compared to the Pentium G4560, and even the Core i5-7400. Jumping to the GTX 1070, we see competitive performance across the board, though it has to be said the G4560, it does still hang in there quite well. However, with the GTX 1080 taking care of the rendering work, the overclocked R3 1200 makes up significant ground, as it was 19% faster once overclocked. The minimum frame rate was also 9% greater than that of the Core i5-7400, so a super result here for AMD's budget Ryzen 3 series. Another popular title we're looking at is World of Tanks, and previously the Ryzen 3 1200 did fall quite far behind the Core i5-7400 when testing with this game. Of course, the Ryzen 3 CPU is much cheaper, but still I felt once overclocked, it could probably make up the difference. And while we're certainly seeing that here, even with the GTX 1060, as the R3 1200 has now caught up and matches the other CPUs tested. Increasing the rendering power with the GTX 1070, the R3 1200 gains a massive 24% more performance and is now 7% faster than the Core i5-7400 when comparing the minimum frame rate. Interestingly, it also matched the R5 1400. Both were, of course, clocked at 4 GHz, but as you guys probably know, the R5 1400 does have SMT for a total of 8 threads. Increasing the rendering power once again with the GTX 1080, we find that in this title we are indeed heavily CPU limited, and as a result, no real extra performance was had. Finally, we have the very popular Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and in part one of this series, I hinted at the fact that the overclock Ryzen 3 CPU did match the Core i5-7400 in this title, and here you can see evidence of this. Whereas the stock R3-1200 was only able to match the Pentium G4560, once overclocked it was able to match and even slightly edge out the Core i5-7400. So another super result here for AMD's affordable $110 US quad-core CPU. Okay, so you've had a good look at the data from the 9 games tested, time for a quick cost per frame comparison. First up, let's look at an average of the average frame rates across the 9 games tested and discuss the cost per frame. Please note the prices I'm basing this comparison on are next to the processor model names. You will notice that I'm pricing the G4560 at $90 US rather than the $64 MSRP. And this is because, for now, it looks like this is the new price for this CPU. I'll discuss that a bit more later on. 
Anyway, let's discuss what's going on here. Using a graphics card like the GeForce GTX 1060, the Pentium G4560, even at the higher retail price, still represents the best value, costing an average of 81 cents per frame, whereas the overclocked R3 1200 costs a little bit more at 90 cents per frame. Still, it's significantly more cost effective than the R5 1400 and the Core i5 7400, both costing well over $1 per frame. With the GTX 1070, we find the overclocked R3 1200 and G4560 are quite similar in terms of value. The Ryzen 3 CPU now costs just 5% more, and it's not bad given you do get a good boost in overall performance. Meanwhile, the R3 1200 is 42% cheaper than the Core i5-7400 in terms of cost per frame, and that lines up well with the overall price as it is 42% cheaper. Now, with the GTX 1080 installed, the overclocked R3 1200 is just able to edge out the G4560 and is 44% more cost effective than the Core i5-7400, so a super result for the overclocked Ryzen 3 CPU. The average frame rates are one thing, but the CPU has a better chance of making a real difference when it comes to the 1% low performance. That said though, the average minimum results across the 9 games tested are much the same, and we set the G4560 and overclocked R3-1200 delivering similar value once again. Out of our interest, I thought we should probably look at the cost per frame for a single title, one where the CPU is quite important, so I grabbed the Overwatch minimum frame rate results. As you might expect, given what we've seen so far, the GeForce GTX 1060 and Pentium G4560 combo do provide the best value here. However, once we step up to the more powerful GTX 1070, the G4560 is now on par with the Ryzen 3 CPU. Then once we call in the GTX 1080, the overclocked R3 1200 delivers the best value overall, as it delivered 12% more bang for your buck when compared to the G4560 and 45% more value when compared to the Core i5-7400. There are a few ways you can look at the overclocked Ryzen 3 performance. Initial impressions might seem underwhelming, especially when looking at certain titles. And I know myself, despite being a big fan of Ryzen 3, I have to admit at first glance the results for popular titles such as Overwatch Battlefield 1 and Counter-Strike Global Offensive, they did seem a bit disappointing. At least, as I said, that was my initial reaction. Once I sat back, though, and thought about the results for a minute, I quickly realised they weren't really disappointing at all. Yes, you do have to overclock the Ryzen 3 to 4GHz, assuming that you can, but even so, the numbers at 3.9GHz, for example, would be much the same. Anyway, I think we can agree you'd have to overclock Ryzen 3 quite heavily just to match the Core i5-7400, and that does seem like a lot of messing around just to match a stock Intel CPU. However, it was then that I realised, well, isn't that what overclocking is really all about for an enthusiast on a budget? Personally, this is what got me interested in computers to begin with all those years ago when I built my very first system using the Celeron 300A. For me, overclocking just isn't about world records. Yes, mega overclocks are impressive and all that, but that's not really what excites most of us now, is it? Rather, what gets me and probably most of you enthusiastic about overclocking is taking an ordinary, affordable CPU and turning it into something more, just like what I did almost two decades ago with my beloved Celeron 300A. For the first time in a long time now, we have an affordable CPU that can be overclocked and is worth buying, kind of like the Pentium G3258, but... Unlike the dual core, it'll be good to game beyond next week. Circling back, my point is that the Ryzen 3 1200 costs just $110 US and can hit at least 3.8 GHz using the stock cooler and a cheap B350 motherboard. 3.9 GHz really should be achievable, and if you're lucky, 4 GHz won't be a problem either. And this was certainly the case with my chip. Brian over at Tech yes City also recently got his R3 1200 to 4GHz in a video he did, so if you haven't checked that out, it is worth checking out, and he found under load it hit just 76 degrees, so others are certainly finding similar results as well. Meanwhile, the locked Core i5-7400 CPU, while less messing around, or I suppose depending on your point of view, can be seen as less fun, it does cost $190 US. So if you're willing to embrace the overclock, then you can achieve a similar level of performance while saving just over 40% on the CPU you purchase alone. I personally would much rather save the money, do the tinkering in the BIOS, and enjoy the sense of pride you get when you know you've done the research, save the money, and manage to achieve the same experience. Although I was only around 15 years old at the time, I still remember that feeling when I got my Celeron 300A to 450MHz using an A-open motherboard. Ah, memories. Finally, in my opinion, what these results tell me is that although you're paying more for the Ryzen 3 1200 over the Pentium G4560, 
in the long run, it will end up being a better value purchase. And we see this when looking at the GTX 1080 results, where the overclocked R3 1200 often pulled miles ahead of the G4560 and offered a much better cost per frame ratio. Still, as good as the R3 1200 is, and it is mighty good, especially if you plan to overclock, the Pentium G4560 for $90 US right now is still a very good buy, um, particularly if you're using something like a GeForce GTX 1060 or a Radeon RX 580 or, of course, anything slower. And if you can somehow get the G4560 for the $64 US MSRP, then I highly suggest doing so, especially if you're on a tight budget, because that is just still an amazing deal. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. If you liked the video, then you know what to do. And the good news is part three of this series will be coming next week as I include the overclocked Core i5-2500K and AMD FX8370 CPUs. I'm your host, Steve. See you again soon, guys.